Hi, this is Tyron Giuliani with Selling Made Social, and I'm going to be up next on the online prosperity show. And I'm going to be talking about how my clients are using LinkedIn and converting it from this old CV style online platform to a nonstop lead generation machine. Look forward to speaking and seeing you on the show. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the LinkedIn king himself, Tyrone. Tyrone, how are you doing, my man? Good, mate. Good. Excellent. And Happy to be here. Fantastic. And thanks for taking your time, by the way. Um, obviously, if you're in the audience, you are always looking to get leads. You're always le looking to expand your business. And sometimes social media is your go-to uh, place. Some of the places we go to are Facebook and now LinkedIn has become a powerhouse for those that are looking for endless stream of leads and those that want to dominate their own niches. Now that's the reason why we've brought in Tyrone who is an expert in this uh, field. He's helping a lot of people with his five-step strategy that he's going to be telling us about today. Thank you so much once again uh, Tyrone. Now, tell us a little bit about your business and what exactly um, happens at uh, Selling Made Social. Yeah, so you know, I'm a business owner first, and you know, I left Australia. I was originally from Melbourne myself, and I moved to Japan. I, I'm an immigrant, so you know, most people will say ex expat, but I'm beyond that. I'm I'm here almost 19 years, so I've immigrated. Um, to Japan and that's where I'm based. I'm based in Tokyo and I started uh, as an entrepreneur. I started my own business, which was a wedding dress um, business and wedding um, service industry and um, built that with my with my partner who became my wife eventually um, she accepted <laughs> and um, you know that's become um, number one independent boutique in Japan. We're doing over 400 weddings a month with that. Um, you know, there's 30 million people in Tokyo. So, you, you know, the population of Australia plus more in this small little city, um, you know, we've, we've perfected the process and hence, you know, 400 weddings a month. Plus I started at the same time or about a year into that, my wife and I worked out very quickly that it's, it's not good having two bosses in one company. So, um, <laughs> You know, being the guy, I, I just thought, well, maybe, you know, leave her to, to handle most of the wedding stuff. And I went into um, um, executive recruiting here in, in Japan and started to help, you know, foreign capitalized companies, all the big boys like the Amazons, the Googles, the Apples, building out their management teams here in Japan and across Asia. And um, took up a partnership in a, in a firm. And then um, went to another firm, took up, you know, started that with um, a group of founders and built that to what it is today. It's a multi-million dollar firm. And we actually just got bought end of last year, so which is cool. Now, during that process, I discovered LinkedIn back in 2004, April. And I quickly realized that this was a game changer for B2B people. You know, so not only did I, in my recruiting business, which was an obvious match with LinkedIn itself, because the current thinking, well, the thinking back then, but it's changing, is that people use LinkedIn as this like career CV showcase site. And it's the worst possible thing you could do on LinkedIn if you are trying to conduct business and do business deals and B2B engagement. If your profile looks like a CV and you've just pasted it on LinkedIn. And, um, you know, with when we talk about the new LinkedIn, um, you know, since Microsoft purchased LinkedIn for $26 billion at the end of last year, they're starting to integrate it into the Microsoft ecosystem. So there's a billion Microsoft users, right? Now you've got 500 million LinkedIn users integrating into their Outlook, integrating into their sales CRM. There's so much going on at the moment. So what I've done is I recognized early on that business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, BD guys, sales directors, if they use LinkedIn properly, that they can use it to generate non-stop leads and they can do it for free because you don't have to use paid advertising. You can create your own audience. So therefore, it's the ultimate blue ocean, right? The whole red blue ocean. You create your own audience because you build it yourself and then you can curate it. Um, no one can replicate it because you can turn off 
privacy thing so no one can see it. So then no one can come in and steal those people from you. You can message them. You can, um, um, you know, be top of mind of these people. You can curate the message that you want to them over and over again. So um, what I've done is I developed a coaching program and it came out of stuff that I was doing kind of for free with, you know, obviously my consultants in, in my firm, but also with the executives that I were dealing with. I mean, they were paying, you know, fees of 30 to a hundred thousand dollars for what we did. So it was just one component. But what I took, did was I saw that that component was so important for business owners. So I took it out of that and then I made it a standalone um, coaching service. And basically, you know, I show business owners how to, um, break that feast famine client cycle that they get into, fill their pipe up with nonstop leads, um, establish authority on LinkedIn, do it with no paid advertising and get in there and get out of there in less than an hour a day, seven hours a week. Right. Because, you know, let's face it, LinkedIn is kind of boring. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not fun. And as a business owner, I can't be stuck on LinkedIn all day using LinkedIn. That's just pointless. But I still want to establish relationships with key people. Now, people outsource this process and stuff. I think that's, that's kind of wrong um, because at the end, opposite end of a profile is a real person. And, you know, when you are trying to create a relationship you don't outsource any relationship right not in real life and why do it as a business owner doing it on on that certainly when you can dedicate you know less than an hour i mean i've averaged this year and it will be a for me personally it will be a, a six figure um revenue directly from linkedin into my pocket um, 4.3 hours a week I'm on LinkedIn. I use rescue time. It tracks how much I'm, I'm on it. And this year has been an average of 4.3 hours, right? So on 4.3 hours with no advertising spend, um, you know, it should be a six figure, um, uh, money generator for, for, you know, for business people that are doing deals that 1000 to $5,000 range, you know, you can generate a lot of money with it. Um, and the great thing about when you have success on LinkedIn, it's an authority site. It's been around for 16 years, 15, 16 years. You get ranked on Google as well. You'll get, a, you know, it's, it's extra juice for the same squeeze. So if you're ranking number one on LinkedIn for your specialty, um, pretty much you you can see it getting translated into Google. Now, for example, for me, one of my businesses, you know, I've got several, I've got my coaching, I've got my wedding, I've got my recruiting. I want to be found for the recruiting one because that's very lucrative. Um, so if someone goes to Google and they, and they go advertising and media recruiter in Asia or advertising media recruiter in Japan, advertising and media recruiter APAC, there's millions of results. But guess who comes up number one? This guy. And where does it link to? LinkedIn. So it's not like I can run ads on LinkedIn and make myself boost up. It's just organic. You're getting indexed by um, Google. And that's another little um, trick is that when you optimize your profile on LinkedIn and you move it away from this CV, horrible style, boring, just, ah, oh, just terrible. <laughs> when you move it to a client facing profile and it's promotional, but not too salesy. It's like, it's like the Goldilocks. It's getting right in the, in the middle. Um, once you have that, it's game on. You're getting indexed on Google. You're getting found on LinkedIn. You're coming up in search appearances as people search for what you are. And it's free. And it's free. And you have the same access as all the big shots, all the celebrities. You know, I guarantee now anyone in their industry, if they do a search on LinkedIn and look for some of their key people who are their competitors or celebrities in their industry, they will see some shocking profiles, which means, you know, not everyone knows that person in, in the world, right? And there's 500 million users, there's eight and a half million Australians on LinkedIn. I mean, eight and a half out of a population, what's Australia now, 25 million? Yeah, yeah. So that must, be, that must be at least 70% of the business people of Australia on LinkedIn, right? When you look at some of the celebrities in the like, internet marketing space, like Russell Brunson or Pat Flynn or Ty Lopez, look at their profiles. They are ugly, ugly, 
ugly and they wouldn't be making a cent on that. So you could literally compete with Ty Lopez, with Pat Flynn. If you were a podcaster and launching your podcasting course, you could actually outrank Pat Flynn. He's making $250,000 a month now and selling his podcasting course and you can outrank one of the best guys. You know, his Smart Passive Income is an awesome podcast. But these celebrities are even using it wrong, which is awesome. You know, because it means when you do it right, you can dominate. Understandable. Yeah. Wow. So there is so much to unpack from that. <laughs> Sorry. That was a big value vomit. I know. I don't call, I know. It, I don't call it a value bomb. That was just a value vomit. <laughs> 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 so. Understandable. We might as well just end the show now because. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so you Replay. You have, replay. <laughs> you have unpacked quite a lot and you have brought to light certain things because a lot of people use LinkedIn as their resume, but you have you know, make them to start looking at it as a sales letter, which is not too salesy, but just bringing in their value on um, what it is that they've got to offer. And you've also mentioned that, um, you know, just using the same uh, squeeze, you can use that information that you have on your LinkedIn to, you know, uh, validate your online footing and also being indexed by Google now creating such a big, um, you know, online um, uh, presence right there, which I don't think a lot of people f use or know besides just going to LinkedIn to get endorsements and to recommend their fellow people that they've worked with, which, um, as you say, is pathetic. And what the other greats are doing, there is opportunity to be, um, you know, un unpacked in there. Now, look at this. The internet came in and people are still really, really confused about it. And if you really look at what you've told me, um, LinkedIn is 16 years old, which still makes it a teenager. Is it a stable um, sort of platform for people to actually really dwell their business on? I understand you are making money on there, but could you actually go in there to look for qualified leads since you say other users are not utilizing it to the best advantage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the good thing about it is that um, people actually put so much on there, right? Because they're like, oh, this is a CV. This is a free space to put CV. So they put everything. They put their hobbies. They put their interests. You know, people actually do um, get lazy and just will rip their CD, CV, which is the showcase of their life, and they put it up there. And what that allows you to do is because people are using it that way, when you are looking for a particular title, like if you're looking for a brand manager in a food company in Australia, in Melbourne, at a company that is, you know, 50 to 200 people, um, and the guy joined the job within the last year because you want to pitch him an idea because he wants to impress his current boss, you can do that. You can search that because people put that information in there. So you can get very specific and it's across all industries. There's over 142, 143 industry categories on LinkedIn, right? So the beauty of people using it as a CV site is that they put tons of data on it. And, you know, they're there, they're sitting there. Now, when you find them, you have to qualify them in the sense of you have to only focus on the most active users and that's why a lot of people get turned off because they send out a hundred requests and they hear nothing it's because they haven't used the filtering right and they're messaging everyone where that Pareto's principle that 80 20 rule really applies about 20 percent of all the users are active that's meaning they have posted within the last 30 days so my business strategy is to always just focus on the last 30 days and get me to a revenue event as fast as possible. So yes, anyone can do it for any industry. If you are trying to sell your business service, you're trying to market your service or a product to another business owner, another um, specific kind of business um, professional like a lawyer or a doctor or a real estate agent that can be that can be identified, you can identify them easy. You can then connect with them easy if you you know, if you are fully optimized and when they look at, you know, when you get a connection request and you look at who that is, if you've got a normal CV, yeah, there's a chance they're going to connect with you. But if you've got a profile that is just, it establishes you as an authority, it shows you as this kind of in the doctor frame, not as a sales guy. And, you know, they see that it's different. You're different to everyone else. 
your connection rates skyrocket. And um, that's the beauty of the people not using it really well is that those that are using it well can just come in and, and just dominate and you swoop up and literally you, you, can, you can predict. And that's what I, I coach to is that I show, and I've got people that are in all parts of the world and in the UK, in the US, Israel, Singapore, Japan, I mean, right across the whole spectrum of the world. And they're all in different categories of business. Some are SEO guys, some are marketing strategists, some are selling education services, some are selling phone, like, you know, VoIP and phone solutions. I mean, there's a whole, I've seen it in all industries and it's the same. It's like, you can get very predictable by testing your connection notes and strategies and connecting your message strategy. So when you send out a hundred, like if you have five different types of client avatars that you go after, you should have five different types of connection notes and five different types of first messages and they should be tested. So then when you want to scale, so maybe you want to do 500 a week or a thousand a week, whatever you can handle. You say, okay, client avatar one is like this. This is the notes that I've tested. Generally, when I send this out, I get 40% connection um, return. So 40% will connect with me. And then when I follow up with this message, this message gets me at 60% return rate, right? So then, you know, I send out a hundred, I'm going to get 40 and out of that 40, 24 are going to respond to me and I'm in a dialogue with them. And I could do that every day. I could get in a dialogue with 24 people predictably every day with that particular client persona, whether it leads to business or not, that's, you know, you have to go through your process. You've got to qualify them. You've got to size them up. You've got to find out their, you know, their pain points. And that's the second part. That's the second step that a lot of people fail is that they go in for the kiss really, really quick. <laughs> right so no matter how good you are at targeting at identifying your client at finding them at connecting them at messaging them and as you see it's a recipe right it's it's you've got to layer it up even if you get all that right if you go in for that kiss straight away game over straight away you've just wasted it so you've got to i think people online have still not cracked communication online <laughs> and it is so basic it is there's no secret to it. This is the secret. Do what you do in real life, but do it online, right? So if you're at a networking event, and I'm sure you've done this before, Prosper. I mean, you've seen this before. Um, when you're on LinkedIn or when you're on Facebook or when you're on any messenger, someone likes your post, someone likes another post, then I know what's coming. I'm getting a connection request. I get the connection request. I accept it. And then what do I get? <laughs> just a list of like, hi, I'm this, I'm that, I offer this, have you thought about this? Da, 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 da. Here's a link, here's a download. I call it the value vomit, which I did at the start <laughs> of the show, so sorry. But I don't, I don't call them value bombs. They are value vomits because you, have, you think it's value because everyone's been teaching you, oh, you've got to share, you've got to give value first. Well, the problem is you're given the wrong value because, you know, like anything, um, unless you know it's of value to them, then it's not. It's not value. It's just like you've just vomited in their inbox. And, <laughs> right, and, it, and the way to equate that is like in real life, if, if I was at a networking event and I saw you, now I'm sizing you up, right? Straight away, well, you look different than me. That's a, not an obvious one. So I've got something to talk about there. Um, you know, you've got a tie on, you look, you know, all right. I, I can, I've got all that data. Now I come up to you and how do we communicate? It's, I make a statement, an observation or a question, and it's short, sharp and snappy. And we do that back and forth for the first few interactions. And then once it rapports, the sentences get longer and our answers and responses get longer. But what, what did people do online? They come in with this paragraph and like, <laughs> like in your face, right? And it's such a small percentage of people, you know, you might be lucky that you've, you've, you've hit the right person at the right time with the right message who's willing to take your vomit. But I tell you what, the majority of people are not. And, you know, so it's just so easy. Practice your messaging, test your messaging, start with a real, you know, like a great one for me. I connect with a lot of founders, a lot of people who start companies, right? So when I send a connections request to them, I always just, I personalize the note. So it's dear Tom, dear Mike, dear Mary. Um, I love to connect with other founders and business owners. I know it's something, it takes something special to, to run a business, you know, love to connect like something short and people are like, yeah, it is. I am pretty special to run my own business and they connect and that gets a pretty good rate. 45 to 50% will connect. Right. Um, 
then I do a follow-up message. If they didn't respond, most will, you know, there'll be a certain percent that will respond and say, yeah, I'm either special, I'm crazy, or, you know, they say something. And then you start your dialogue, right? But those that don't, I follow up with a message. And I say, hey, I just noticed, you know, once they're connected, I get to see their data now. So it's like me seeing you in real life. Now that I'm connected, it opens up all their page. So as soon as I get connected, I hit their page straight away. I look at their company, like really quick. I, and I formulate, I have a few different strategies so I can pull them down and use it. But the, the easiest quick one that gets me a 65% response rate is I just say, hey, I love your company name. You know, did you come up with that? What founder can resist telling you about how they made the name of their company? <laughs> not many, <laughs> not many. It, it was, I was sitting in a restaurant and I wrote it on a napkin. And <laughs> <laughs> right. And it gives you so much. And then you've got the rapport going and, and you go back and forth. And then only when you know you are in rapport, should you ever move on to the next step under the sales process. And that is uncovering their problem. Right. And they're going to have many. We only need one. But unless you establish that rapport and you establish it online or you establish it in real life in a sales call, on a phone call, never, ever move on to the next step because you will never get the truth. You will never uncover the real problem and you'll never make the sale. I mean, you just, you just can't. And if you have made the sale, it's not because that you were great. It's just that that person was in so much pain, but they couldn't be bothered telling you about it and they just wanted your solution, right? But and that's how it's online. You've got to connect. You've got to get that rapport going and do it natural. And then, boom, get them off LinkedIn and say, well, that's a problem. Yeah, look, you know, three of my clients are in your industry. They had exactly the same problem. Um, but, you know, we had some strategies that helped them. Would you like to hear about them? Let them ask you. Yes, I would like to hear about it. Well, how about, hey, are you free now? Let's go on the call. Bang. There's your call. You're on the sales. You know? That's how you do it on LinkedIn. I'll send you my, and I'll send you my bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you notice I was actually taking notes. And um, obviously I'm human. I started judging my own process and I was like, how did, how did we get on this call? But we, we should definitely talk after this. So you've mentioned something that is um, very profound. You, you went in, um, you know, all out on this. Obviously, um, humans are creatures of habit. Like you said, uh, mm. what we are putting out online is not a direct reflection of what you would do in person. And it's a habit that people have maybe subconsciously, um, you know, gotten because now we live in a world of instant gratification. So they think they just go in, swipe right, and you've got a Netflix and chill with them and which you are proclaiming that is a wrong way to do. Now, I've noticed also on LinkedIn, when you go out to reach out to people, um, at some point, if you're not at a certain subscription level, you would have to send them what is called an email. Now, how is all of that you've been saying, is that all possible to be done on a free profile or do you actually have to get maybe the sales navigator or some of the other higher tier uh, prof, mm -hmm. um, you know, packages that LinkedIn has. Is it all possible right. on a free, free um, endorsement there? My first two years of using LinkedIn, I billed $925,000, I'm, I'm thinking Japanese yen, 92 million yen. So yeah, $925,000 and it was on a basic free account. So yes, you can do it. They have gotten stricter and stricter and stricter and reduced the amount of filtering that can be done, the amount of search results. But if you're a bit of a tech, um, tech guru, um, you can do Boolean searches via Google and you can search the public site of, of LinkedIn. So you could do, you know, site searches for LinkedIn and like um, a, a, a Boolean string and actually search from Google itself. And so it won't get counted as a search on LinkedIn, but Google, this is the thing, Google index LinkedIn. So it'll show you all the results of all the public profiles of everyone that matches your search string. And then you can just go in and, and, you know, connect with them that way. So there are, you know, you can get around it. Um, but, you know, seriously, if you're a business owner or an entrepreneur and you can't put 80 bucks together a month <laughs> i mean one deal i pay it for 40 years so you know like I, i'm not too fast about 70 bucks you know. i mean in melbourne 
<laughs> Melbourne prices now, that's like, you know, three drinks or something, right? So it, it, it um, would be. Yeah. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you can you can with basic you can get around it. There are there are limitations. Um and then if you have a little bit of um um nous about online sourcing and searching and doing boolean strings, yes, you can you can break um those um restrictions. Understandable. So at the beginning of the year, there was a few sort of tools that rocked up the surface. You know, there's those LinkedIn tools that help you look at people's profiles. And then when they do come back, um, marrying with what you said earlier on, if your profile is set up as a sales letter, people would then look you as well and automatically see how good you are as a person and see if they want to connect or not. And once they've looked at your profile. Now you can uh, go in for the, <clears throat> for the hello, what's up? Do you want to come to mind? <laughs> Frolic <laughs> or <laughs> things yeah. that business people do together. Um, yeah. So what, what, what's your perception on these uh, tools that game the system? Sure. Um, so, you know, there was a, a few weeks, well, not a few weeks, maybe, two months back there was a bit of a like a LinkedIn um, um, crackdown and uh, a lot of companies had to just stop their tool because it was breaking the um, the policy user user policy of LinkedIn that was scraping data basically and um, that was forbidden so um, some major tools that were used for sourcing and identifying people and that just got you know it stopped it stopped their business overnight um, there, there are tools. I think if you put a, if you layer a tool, and exactly that, it's just a tool. You've got to have the strategy. So no, no matter what tool you use, if you don't have the strategy, it's kind of pointless. But the best tools that I find, um, are, you know, there's, there's really two major tools that I use to help me with um, four things, and one of them is like building my connection um, network automatically, connecting with people automatically. Messaging, messaging people automatically and then distributing my content automatically. And at the moment I'm testing another one which does like follow up emails and all this kind of cool stuff in, inside the platform. And none of them break, break the um, user agreement of LinkedIn. Now, I think tools are absolutely necessary as a business owner to allow you to then um, set strategies in place, literally press go, and have it working as you're doing other things. You're in a meeting outside, you're whatever. So my network is always building. Um, my visibility is always growing, um, but I do it in a way no one would know that it was a robot, right? So the same thing, I emulate real life as close as possible, and I only use it on the limited um, within the, the strategy that I'm doing. So um, I don't send connection requests to people when I'm not there because I want to capitalize. As soon as someone connects, I've got that, that temporary moment of influence and I want to, because they've just gone to my, they saw my request, they checked it, they went to my profile, they had a look, they decided, yeah, he's good, except I want to capitalize on that because once, you know, five minutes on, they've forgotten about you. A day later, sayonara, right? So you've got to capitalize. So you can use these tools to do that. And I, I see this all the time, you know, I, I coach people to unmess up their LinkedIn as well because they've used some service where they're like, oh, someone's connected with me with 1,500 people a month for the last three months. It's cost me $2,000 a month, but they've given me 15 or 300 connections. I'm like, you can do that in a week by yourself properly. And you know, how much have you made from these connections? Oh, nothing. Um, you know, have you built authority? Have you established yourself as a go-to person by using that? No, no. Um, so there's automation out there. There's a lot of firms that push this, like we'll do your LinkedIn, we'll build your connections. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. They are, um, they're doing something that you can do for 15 bucks a month yourself. And within half an hour of learning the strategy, you can do it. And, and you're getting exactly the same result as these firms that are charging. You know, I see it in Australia. There's a few out there. I know them that are charging this two grand, 15 grand a month to get 300 ideal client connections. Like, are you kidding me? 
they should, you know, A, first of all, they are, no matter what they say, they do not have an agreement with LinkedIn to allow them to do that because you are not allowed to go on someone's profile and use their profile. It's you only that can use your profile. So if they're using this like remote access, remote access, yeah, I've met so many people that have had, because of some stuff up, because of their VA in the Philippines or India or somewhere who, who forgot to do something, their account gets suspended right and frozen and if you've got this network of people and it's one of your key lead generating tools i mean why would you put it at risk you know it's just, it's crazy and these companies are doing that and they they spin this story that oh no we're we're approved by linkedin no you're not there's no one is approved to able to access your account and use it like that that's just that's just utter nonsense Understandable. So Tyron, yeah. you dropped a lot of value about LinkedIn. I think I'm going to just set up yet another account so that I can <laughs> utilize all the information that you've um, <laughs> given us here today. Um, if people have been watching this show, obviously, and I do encourage if you're watching this show right now, please press the like button, share this, and also subscribe to this channel because value like this is only given out by experts like Tyron and after now you will be paying for this now um, Tyron somebody will be watching right now and they're already uh, guns blazing they want to know more about what you teach your master class and everything else tell us um, tell us how people can get a hold of you or get hold of set, uh, selling made um, social social yeah yeah exactly. so there's a few things I, on facebook if you if you just type in you know looking for groups if you put in um linkedin sales funnels for entrepreneurs you know will come up i have a page in the group join the group um if you want to find me um it's you know tyron t-y-r-o-n and then Giuliani, which is hard to spell, G-I-U-L-I-A-N-I. Or the easiest way is to go on Google and search advertising and media recruiter in Asia. <laughs> and I'll be number one. So, and that will lead you to my LinkedIn and you can connect with me there. Um, but, you know, I, I use, strangely enough, I use Facebook to communicate with people about LinkedIn. That's a bit funny, isn't it? But um, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook groups are fantastic for kind of engagement and getting communities and growing a tribe, I find, um, over LinkedIn, in fact. Um, so, you know, I'm not married to LinkedIn as the only platform. I think a good business person will have multiple <coughs> um, streams. But, yep, to find me, um, get me on Facebook. Um, and I can send you guys a link so you can put it in, in your notes about um, a masterclass where I show the five um, steps, particular the five steps of my clients and the shifts that they have had to make to make nonstop leads on, um, on LinkedIn. So I'll share that with you guys. Understandable. Thank you so much for that. And um, obviously, um, you know, people would value the information that you've just dropped onto us. What sort of last words would you give to somebody who's sitting on the fence right now and doesn't really know, you know, how to calibrate their LinkedIn or should they go or should they stay or is it something right. they can do or do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the fact is I think if you – uh, you know, a really good test of your profile, I call it the gut feel. So if you've made a, f a profile and you think it's too sale, you know, straight away, get rid of the whole CV thing, right? You've got to reposition and optimize your profile. Look at my profile as a hint. That will give you a whole heap of things to do. Um, and use the gut feel. So if you look at or you ask your friend, does this look too salesy? Does this, you know, what do you see when you, when you look at my profile? If someone says, ah, oh, kind of like a sales thing you're, you're wrong so you've got to step it back a bit so that's the first thing i would recommend the second thing is put strategies in place have intent when you go onto linkedin and don't start connecting to all these people or sending out all these messages um, if you haven't tested your message first because at the moment you're neutral on linkedin you have no no one has an opinion of you um, and if you're going after a certain niche and you start doing activity in that niche and you're starting to really annoy people, those people are connected most likely. And they'll talk about you when they're at networking events or when they're in their discussions. So you, you can go from neutral to negative really, really quick. And, and we know to get to a sale, then you've got to go from neutral. I mean, you've got to go from ne negative to neutral, then positive, and then a sale. So the best thing, if you don't know what you're doing on LinkedIn, get off it. 
and just like study it and learn it because it's not forgiving. It's not like Facebook where, you know, it's gone people. These are business people you're dealing with. And, you know, generally you don't get a second chance. Like, yeah, we always say give people a second chance. Generally you don't in on LinkedIn. So um, don't go in there with your boots on and just stomp all over the place. Get a little bit educated first, test your messages first on a small group of people, see what kind of response you get. So always test your connection message, test your, your email message follow up and, and lock down one that gets a good return and then scale. So don't just go in and, and go full hack. And if you're wondering, should I get on LinkedIn? If you are a business and you are selling to other businesses, then why aren't you on LinkedIn? <laughs> I mean, you know, as we said, probably 70% of businesses are uh, business owners in Australia are on LinkedIn in you know, eight and a half million accounts in Australia. That's incredible. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for the depth of knowledge and the expertise that you just dropped on this show today there, um, Tyrone. And um, if you're watching this show, I'll be putting in details of the five-step strategy that Tyrone is teaching his clients to actually dominate and generate non-stop business leads on the new LinkedIn. You're going to be doing this without spending a dollar on advertising and even get known within your industry and your niche. So if you, um, you know, haven't started off with LinkedIn, watch this video again and then share it to somebody else, um, you know, just so that you could uh, get them to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much, Tyrone, for your time today. Thanks, matey. Great.